Foster, um, my co-chair Ashley Akinson, and I are both here today um, for the 28th meeting of the um, SBC task force. So welcome everybody. Um, got a small but mighty agenda for today. Um, let's see. So first we'll spend a couple minutes um, talking about what we're wor working on, reading and thinking. And Ashley will share some draft formative research, a draft about a draft formative research planning guide. And uh, Claire will share a new resource. And then we'll, I, actually it says work plan, but I don't think we have any work plan items on there, but we'll do updates and announcements. Um, so yeah, so let's just kind of go, um, I can't actually see the list, so maybe Erin, you can help me manage that, but have people go down the list and share, um, you know, it could be in terms of SBC or if you have other news you want to share with the group, what's new with you and um, something, maybe what are you reading or, you know, would like to tell the group about that you're um, reading or working on. Um, so we start with, I guess, Ashley and Claire and then go down the list of participants. Yeah, sure. That's, um, and I can start. I'm hearing, but um, but and I have a new nephew this summer, so that's very exciting. Um, and then we can go down to Ashley. Okay. Um, hi, this is Ashley, and uh, my um, internet is hanging up just a little bit today. So sorry if I'm going to be a little uh, in and out. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I've been working on um, when we get down to the formative research planning guide. So I think I will pass it on to the next person. Oh, sorry, I forgot how to. I forgot I had to unmute myself. This is Claire Boswell with um, with Pop, and um, congratulations on your new nephew, Aaron. That's exciting. I have just started to read, and I'm only about halfway through this um, paper on social norms. Um, that was mentioned in a webinar recently. It's uh, the authors, Ching and Rimal. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting, just trying to kind of wrap my head around. They talk about different um, types of social norms that they're, you know, they're, they're not all one huge thing, but they put them in these distinct categories in the framework that they mentioned. So it's been really interesting. And then, go ahead, Mary. No, I was just noticing I couldn't unmute my microphone. But go ahead, Erin. Oh, well, I was going to say, Mary, you're next, or we'll go on to Anna. Okay. Sorry, I was trying hard to unmute my microphone. Um, yeah, so it's not super new, but um, one thing that's consuming some of my time and thoughts lately is a resilience project that um, Claire and I are both working on. That's um, it's a yeah, the real project R E A L. I can't write this second under what it stands for, but I'm um, reading a lot of stuff about resilience. One thing that's pretty interesting is called the social roots of risk by Kathleen Tierney. And um, I've also been looking at positive deviance, the power of positive deviance by um, Pascal Stern and Vernon um, in, in thinking about it in terms of resilience. So those are two of the things I've been reading. What's up next? Hi, this is Anna Titchler. I'm with the Aga Khan Foundation. Um, what's new with me is I'm new to the Aga Khan Foundation. I've only been here for about four months. Um, and I've been reading a lot of RFAs and RFPs lately. Oh, sounds exciting. <laughs> Who's next? Beth, I believe, just joined us. Um, so let's go to Joel, if you can turn on your microphone. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is, hi, everyone. My name is Joel Mercado. I work with Helps and Food for the Hungry. I am based in Phoenix, Arizona. And lately I have been reading a book called Sprint, 
and it's how to solve big problems and test new ideas in just five days. It's a book that is very business oriented, but I was thinking that the principles can easily be used to, um, to test new ideas and to come up also uh, with um, new behavioral change um, strategies quick, um, in, in a very quick and easy way. You recommend it? Should we read it? Yeah, I, I will recommend it. It's, it's a very interesting, very practical book. It's a, a very easy read. Um, yeah, and it's full of examples. So it's, it's almost like a manual, but it, it's a great book. I, I will recommend it. It's, it's written by Jake Knapp with John Zerasky and Braden Kowitz. And it's a book that came out from Google Ventures. Kim just signed back on. Hopefully. Are you able to put the microphone? Maybe that's going down the list. Yeah. Yes. Um, Mary Helen. I'm not sure if she was able to turn on her microphone either. Um, and we'll come back. And the next person we have is actually Michaela from our office. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm Michaela. Um, I am interning with Core Group this summer. This is actually my last week, so I will sadly be heading home to Boston this weekend. Um, but I recently read Scott Jackson's book at the recommendation of our executive director, um, and I thought it was very interesting. Would also recommend it. Thank Tara, you, Tara. Is here. Go ahead, Erin. No, go ahead, Tara. Hi, everyone. This is Tara Kovach from uh, the Santa Project. Sorry, my um. Tomorrow's my daughter's second birthday, so um, I'm actually taking a vacation day, but I wanted to be on the call, um, so you may hear her in the background if I talk. Um, yes, as many of you know, I'm a remote worker um, working uh, for uh, FHI 360 Santa Project, and uh, we actually just moved um, to Juneau, Alaska this week, so we are just settling into our new house, enjoying the Alaska summer. Um, and I just read an article this morning, actually, um, um, but it's really sorry. Yeah, sorry, Tara. I think you lost the end of yours. Yeah, I didn't hear what you were reading. Maybe you can also type it into the box. It's great to hear your voice. Congratulations on your daughter's birthday. You also slapped it. That's another thing that came up. Yeah, Beth. I think she's going to type her intro okay. into the box. Okay, well, let's go ahead. Um, it is nice to be a small group. So we've got the slides in different order. Um, Claire, are you okay to go ahead and do your part, or should I skip ahead to um, Ashley's slide? Oh, sure, I can, I can go through this very quickly. Um, some of you may already know about this, but if you don't, um, we are super excited to introduce a new manual that we just finished uh, a little over a month ago called Realize. This is a collaboration between CARE and TOP. Um, and it's, we played around with the name a little bit, but we landed on social behavioral change for gender equity and diversity. The tool um, is 
a little bit like Make Me a Change Agent in the sense of the structure. So there are several different lessons that can be um, pulled out and used. And the objective is um, to get people talking and thinking about gender equity, diversity, and how to use those new awarenesses, ideas, um, challenging thinking um, through their social behavior change programs. You can see the citation there. I didn't put the link in, but you can find this on the FSN Network uh, website. Just put Realize into the search box. Um, so as I said, one of, the, one of the pros is that it has a lot of lessons that can be used in, in adopted in a variety of ways. So you can pull out one or two here and there and incorporate them into other trainings. You can do them over time. You can do them in a three and a half day workshop, which is how we piloted it in March. Um, the activities are highly experiential and they really connect well with the affect and of course, you know, the, the cognitive aspect of, a, of our lives as well. Um, and they, they help to address some sometimes difficult themes in a very safe, accessible manner. Um, oh, thank you, Mary, for putting the link in there. Um, we tried to put in pretty clear instructions to facilitators on you know, this is what you need to think about as you plan for this session, especially if it's addressing a sensitive topic, um, how they can adapt it to their context. And lastly, you're getting it translated right now, and so it will soon be available in French and Spanish in the next month, actually. Um, so here are the contents quickly. Uh, you, you'll see some, just some basic ones, which are intro, dating norms and guidelines, expectations. Um, there uh, are some that were very new to me that were quite powerful. Um, diversity of power, the differentiation lab, um, always, sometimes, never, that um, our own Mary DeCoster wrote. Um, so there, there are, there's quite a lot in here, and they address a variety of things. Some of them are very specific to gender. Others are more specific to um, just how we interact with people and in interpersonal um, communication, like in voices. Uh, so you'll also recognize, let's see, which one is it? This one. Um, Negotiated behavior change, we adapted from the Make Me Change Agent manual to um, get people thinking a little bit more about gender-related behaviors. And I thought I would just delve quickly into one of the activities that mo many of the participants at our workshop um, found to be quite powerful. And this was called A Woman's Life. And I believe this comes out of CARE's social analysis and action work. Uh, so this is one in which participants are encouraged to think about a social norm prevalent in their context and how it affects different aspects or domains um, for a woman or a girl. Um, so you'll see the picture that I put there, which is the sample one that we did in March. And so you first you draw a big circle, and then you put, um, you see the boxes around the circle are the domains of a woman's life, so her education, her health, our household role. Um, so we gave sample domains to people and they said you can use these or you can use different ones. And then they choose a social norm and in this case you'll see they chose mobility for um, a preteen in Mozambique where she's allowed to go and not go alone or um, accompanied. And then how that affects different parts of her life. And it really gets people to challenge those norms that we often accept in our own context without thinking through implications, um, especially from a, from a gender lens. So that's just one example of the activities that are included. And yeah, so uh, we encourage you to take a look at it, try out the activities. They are mostly designed for staff um, to be used in country field office settings, some of the activities CARE has piloted with community members, um, but in general they were designed for staff, so we encourage you to try them out, let us know um, what you think. And then when you, when you take a look at the manual, then you can vote and tell us if you think it should be a recommended resource. All right.
Thanks, Mary. So um, over to you, Ashley, or does anyone want to ask a question about that before we move on? Um, well, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. No, this is really not, um, it's not a, an analytical or strategic planning tool in any way. Um, this is really to get people to sort of examine their deeply held um, viewpoints, values, um, opinions that they might not have examined um, in depth uh, to get them thinking. There are a few things in there that, that might help people as they're help staff as they're planning to tackle an issue in the community. So like, like I mentioned, the always, sometimes, never that um, Mary wrote helps people to think through, you know, where do I start? Of course, we included negotiated behavior change, which is a strategy. But overall, it's not a, um, it's not a big planning tool or, or an analytical tool. It's, it's highly experiential for the, for the participants. Did you want to say more, Mary? I'll just add to it because you know, I, I love this tool and it was so much fun to work on it almost as much fun as it was doing um, making the change agent. But, um, you know, I think our, our thought was that sometimes staff are having to promote stuff that they haven't even worked through on for themselves, you know, and and um, so, you know, if they're trying to promote um, gender equity and diversity, um, you know, it's nice for them to examine how it affects their, them in their own lives and their own families and in their community. and. And then also to take a look at how you know some of the things they can take out into their lungs. So it you know this isn't something. I mean you might you might use this with staff after you've done your gender analysis. You know for example at the end you. It's also designed so that you don't have to do all of the lessons all at once. Did you already mention that, Claire? I think you did. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, what other questions does does anyone have? You can take the mic or type into the chat box if you have a question about that. So I put the link in for the Survey Monkey. If you want to just go ahead and do it right now while you're thinking about it, otherwise you'll get an email um, with an opportunity to vote on the tool as well. Um, and you know, if you haven't seen the tool before, you might want to you know, take a few moments to take a look at that first. And I put the link in for the tool a little bit higher up in the chat box. It looks like Beth is typing. And does anyone else have a, a question? Grab a microphone. Has anyone had a chance to look at this tool yet um, that's online? Wondering initial um, reactions from anybody. Um, Beth Ann Cottrell from CARE worked with us on this, and she got to use it recently in Francophone Africa, and she said they were really hurt. Her, um, they had regional staff, staff from a number of countries, and they were really quite um, enthusiastic. So that was a good sign because um, that can be a tough bunch. They're, you know, they expect really, really fun training. Uh, let's see, Beth, Beth says, with Make Me a Change Agent, we developed and adapted it into a manual for staff. Is, this, is that how this tool is planned to be used? Um, well, Beth, I think it, I mean, while it's cool that you guys adapted it into a manual, we, we're sharing it as we usually do in um, Word format as well as PDF so that people can do what they need to with it. You know, obviously you might want to translate it into a local language or take parts of it out, like just use certain activities out of it um, that are a good fit for your needs. So I think people will use it a lot of different ways, um, you know. So yes, you can certainly do that. Um, that's what you'd like to do with it. If you have a Beth Outerson on your staff, you can do that. You can certainly <laughs> go in that direction. But other people can just use it off the shelf too. Yeah. Okay. Well, if there are no, no more questions, let's move on. Or if you think of a question later on, you can type them into the chat box or email us. Um, so now, Ashley, you can take the microphone, and I will mute. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? 
Okay, I'm going to take that as a yes. Great, thanks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, yeah, I am, uh, uh, last week at the top uh, knowledge sharing meeting, I was um, glad to be able to sit in at the your guys' lunchtime table, Mary and Claire, when you were um, sharing the, the Real Life tool. I think it's a, a really nice, um, I think it's a tool that is very friendly to being used in combination, uh, you, you know, with other trainings or um, capacity building stuff, both internal with staff and uh, external with partners and communities. So congratulations on, on getting it out there. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about um, is a formative research planning guide. It's been in the works for a, for a couple of years. It's been it's been uh, on the task force's work plan um, for longer than I'd like to admit, um, and we're finally getting close to having something uh, ready to share with you guys. It's evolved a bit. Um, we initially, um, you know, we. This came from the idea that um, often when, when we as um, social and behavior change practitioners, uh, when we are um, asking managers and program designers to kind of build in some time for formative research and for having a mechanism built in to use formative research findings to actually change the way we do programming uh, and, um, and then kind of uh, doing maybe little mini uh, assessments or formative research as kind of part of monitoring to check in on how things are going. When we ask um, for that time and space and resources to do that, often managers kind of say, well, what's the value at it? What is this going to get me? How much is it going to cost? And how much time is it going to take? And so, uh, and as we know, uh, the answer is kind of, well, it really depends. <laughs> and so um, what we've come uh, around to uh, is um, a sort of planning guide, which we're trying to keep pretty, pretty um, practical, um, that it can at least uh, help people answer those questions a little bit for themselves, or at least kind of estimate what those answers might be. So today, I just kind of wanted to introduce what, what the shape of the guide is looking like now and kind of the, the outline of the contents. Um, in the next uh, week or two, we should have a pretty solid draft that's um, ready to share. So I'm, I'll talk through the content, but we're looking also for a couple of people to maybe uh, a fresh pair of eyes or two to kind of take a look at it and see if there are any um, revisions to suggest. Um, but we really would love to get this out um, and you know to out into the world in the next um, couple of months if possible. So. Um, Tom Davis uh, was part of developing this, uh, myself, Mary, and Claire, and we've had uh, other people, since this has been kind of around for years, we've had other people also contributing ideas, uh, other task force members. Um, so essentially, um, we're aiming for something around 10 pages, um, certainly no more than 15, uh, and it's going to be pretty modular, so people, it doesn't have to be read front to back, it, it's kind of divided up into key questions that people might have. Um, and so this is more or less the table of contents on the slide here. Um, first, what is, what's in the planning guide, who is the planning guide really for? Um, a little uh, basic kind of 101 um, content. What is formative research? How does it fit in with program life cycles? Um, how do we use form? And then a little bit about once we make the, you know, what is formative research going to get us? How do we use formative research findings for strategy design? Um, but also for kind of strengthening programs throughout. Um, and We'll probably we'll try to be you know in this more kind of 101 or intro introductory material. We'll try to sort of sort out how is formative you know how what's the difference between formative research, situational analysis, context assessment, these various kind of terms that are floating around, just to help try to give people some clear language that they can then use with decision makers and managers, um, and then. Um, in the section around how do we actually go about using findings to influence um, our strategy design, we have some nice program examples um, to, to show how you know people actually made some design decisions based on what they found out in the formative research. So some small little concrete examples. Um, and then we get into um, how do we know the right questions to ask? And once we figure out what those questions are, how do we know which methods to use to answer them, because it's, there's kind of a bewilderment 
bewildering array right now of uh, formative research methods out there. Um, there's barrier analysis, there's positive deviance inquiry, um, there's all kinds of uh, participatory rapid assessment techniques. So we just kind of um, first talk a little bit about the role that secondary data review plays and also existing program data, data from other programs that have been operating in, in, the, in your same context. So looking through that secondary data is what can help you figure out what do you already know and what are some questions you may still need to answer. Um, through formative research, so that helps you narrow down your questions. And then really the core, to me, or the part I'm the most excited about uh, in the planning guide is actually we give little summaries of uh, about half a dozen common formative research methods um, with a little description and sort of some pros and cons and kind of maybe level of level of resource intensity, level of training needed to do them, that kind of thing, um, just to give people an idea uh, and sort of what types of questions might be better answered, say, with a positive deviance inquiry versus a barrier analysis. So just giving a little guidance on that. And then um, the last section is around um, planning. Uh, and, it, you know, at, at one time we were kind of ambitious. We wanted to actually give people sort of like price ranges, like well, formative research using this method. Uh, you know, looking at one behavior or, you know, two or three behaviors tends to Take this, you know, here's the range of how much time it might take, here's the cost. But we've actually found it pretty tough to get concrete program data because every organization splits out th these costs in different ways in their budgets and, and even sometimes within an organization it's kind of hard to put it all back together to say how much altogether did we spend on this and how much time altogether did it take. But what we've tried to do is put together some tools uh, that at least tell you these are the methods that are going to take, these are the factors that are going to affect how long it's going to take. Uh, these are the kind of human capacities that you need. And these are kind of the cost centers. Like these are the factors that are going to affect the cost and make it more, more or less expensive. Sort of things to look out for. Um, and then we have, um, in that section also, we have a, like a sample scope of work, for example, for a, a consultant or a firm to do formative research. Um, and then, uh, and kind of a list of competencies, which is based off of our core competency list that the, that the task force developed um, a couple of years ago. And then finally, just some additional resources where people can go to learn more about the methods. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at um, in terms of the content. Um, and again, we're just looking to disseminate it um, and the idea, you know, on through the task force, through the talks, and, and hoping that people will pick it up and disseminate it through all of your networks. Um, and it is meant to be just a very practical kind of guide to help people plan and also to help people kind of pitch formative research to their decision, the decision makers that they're working with. So any thoughts or questions um, before I go on? Wow, I am excited. I haven't seen it in a little while, so I'm really looking forward to seeing the current iteration. Um, Ashley has taken it under her wing to kind of help try to help bring it home. Yes. Yeah. So, does anybody want to take that? That's right. Sounds great. I totally agree. Um, anybody want to ask Ashley some questions about it or volunteer? To you. Yes, that's where I was headed next. Um, it is. It has been challenging to, to as Mary said, <laughs> bring it home because what we ended up with was essentially way too much information. Um, and and uh, because we're all enthusiasts for formative research, uh, so we're really trying to. The time involved is really trying to get it down to something very practical. So, but but I think we still need a couple of reviewers to help us figure out if we've if we've made it or not. Um, is this really something that's going to be? Um, something that people can pick up and, and use and, and it's not going to be too much of an investment of their time. Yeah, and I think the review process won't be extremely time right. to there. I mean, basically, you know, just read 10 pages and send us your thoughts, you know, and maybe if, if you want to chat, you know, we could have one quick call or something like exactly. that. Exactly. It's not going to be an, an ongoing. I think that some of you that work for three years on making going on. Yeah, that's a great point. This is definitely something that we're we're wanting to to move on out the door. So and and other people will be able to um, 
uh, take it in and run with it. That's a great question, Beth. Um, we do um, try to clarify. Um, we we've it's uh, we haven't actually tackled operations research implementation science you know we sort of haven't gotten into that but because it's more uh, where we've found people getting confused is around what's the difference between a situational assessment and a context assessment or formative research or what are you supposed to do bef as you're developing a proposal or or even as they're as even as people are designing um, procurements um, you know versus you know, we, we tend to think of formative research being something that happens, you know, in the, you know, once you're really starting up a program, what do we still need to know to do this? So thank you, Beth, for that comment. I think we probably could throw in, um, do you have any recommended, have you, have you guys seen definitions of ops research or implementation science that, that you particularly liked? Because that's also kind of a field of, there, there. It's you know, there. People have different opinions about what e what these things really mean. Um, so even if you have thoughts after our call on that, um, we'd welcome. If if you guys have definitions that you like, we can definitely incorporate it into that section of of how does formative research kind of fit into a program life cycle. All right. Um. Yeah. You can volunteer now, or we'll. we'll <laughs> yeah, we can. When we'll circulate it, um, the draft to task force members, and um, ask uh, again for a couple of volunteers. So maybe you can take a look first and see if you think it looks too. Take a skim, and if you if you feel like you can give us thoughts on it, that'd be awesome. Okay. Okay, great. So I guess um, we can move on to announcements, unless anyone has any other thoughts. Great. Okay. Um, so um, the SCC Journal Club has been a really nice uh, collaboration between uh, the core SCC group and the top um, task force. Um, essentially, if you've been reading, you know, something interesting, like for example, the the Lawrence Haddad uh, et, et al. article that you mentioned, Tara, or anything else, um, and you'd and you'd like to just kind of informally. Um, say what you found interesting about it and uh, give keep other folks another, a chance to read it and kind of discuss it on, on these journal club calls. That would be super. I think we have someone who's thinking about doing something in October, uh, but there aren't any dates set yet. So uh, we're always kind of looking for volunteers for the journal club. So just reach out to us and let us know. Uh, and Mary's email is there. Um, because it's a way that we, you know, there's so much information, so this is a nice way to kind of highlight what may be most relevant for those of us who are passionate about SBC. Um, and then uh, coming up, um, I, I've, over the last couple of years, talked about um, this online training for helping folks who do nutrition-sensitive agriculture program design think about SBC and how they can incorporate SBC approaches. Uh, and so um, finally, that training is ready to launch. Uh, it's an online training. Uh, uh, it can be done all in one day, about a seven-hour day, or it can be split into two half days. Um, and so Spring's going to be doing a webinar introducing that training. Um, and the tentative date for that is um, September 21st. So maybe, um, and it'll be in the morning. So uh, maybe tentatively mark your calendar, but we're pretty excited to get this tool out there in the world. Uh, at the end of September, the core group fall conference is coming up. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's the 20th anniversary, so I think we're all looking forward to that. Um, thank you, Tara, for mentioning that. Um, yes, the, the end of project Santa event. Do you want to actually say something about that, Tara? Since, do you want to just take the mic and tell us more about that? Sure. Hopefully you all can hear me a little better now. Um, yeah, we're very excited to have our um, end of project event on Wednesday, September 6th. Um, many of you, hopefully most of you, received uh, Save the Date, I believe it was, last week. Uh, so we hope to see you all there. Um, and the project will actually continue. Um, we have an extension until next year. Um, but uh, many of our countries have been closing out. Um, so we wanted to have the event now so we can have um, many of our um, our staff from overseas uh, be present and be able to present on a lot of the great work that they've done. So anyway, great um, 
hopefully we will uh, see you there and um, also at the core group meeting um, a few weeks later. Great. Um, and yeah, that's super. We're, spring is a little bit in the same situation where we have an extension going on to next year, but um, I, I think that's really exciting that you guys decided to go ahead and have an end of project event to get out your, your country learning. So that's great. Um, and then finally, um, the SEEP Network Annual Conference um, is going to be in Arlington this year. And, and that's a really interesting agriculture and microfinance, um, micro enterprise kind of space. And uh, they are kind of getting on the social and behavior change uh, train a little bit. Um, as you can see, the theme of the conference is catalyzing transformative change. And that's coming up in early October. Um, so are there any other, any other announcements? Mary, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Oh, okay. Just to say goodbye, I yeah. think. Um, so thank you, everybody. We've really appreciated all of your enthusiastic participation in the SEC um, task force. And um, yeah, it's nice to be together. Um, if you have any more announcements, you could type them in the box very quick, but I don't think anybody has anything else. Um, and I think you know how to reach me if you want to volunteer for Journal Club. And look for the box right below. And look for the draft formative research planning guide coming out in the next week or two. Okay, super. Thank you so much for your putting so much heart and soul into that thing, Ashley. You really drove it along, I think, and um, people have well, you've certainly got me eager to see the next iteration. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Thanks so much, everyone, and we'll put the recording online in the next few days.